Hey YouTube, welcome back to Chessy System Locomotive Project Part 4. Um, if you haven't seen uh, the first three videos, there should be a link here popping up to take you to video one. Um, this is where we left off. We had just put the um, the uh, the blue on top of the locomotive and since we had that paint already mixed we decided to go ahead and paint the catwalks or the walkways the exterior part of the locomotive where if you were standing flat footed your feet would touch now we have walkways in front and rear uh, above the anti climbers so what we're going to do basically is what you want to try to do is tape off everything above that area on the inside of the locomotive and everything below that area on the outside of the locomotive and since this blue is blue okay I mean it, it don't get any bluer uh, it's gonna show up really bad on any other vermilion or the yellow if uh, we get any bleed or leakage so as you can see here uh, I normally just start at the front of the locomotive I'm working my way around that little area right there is also going to have to be blue uh, any horizontal part of the locomotive uh, that has to do with your feet need to be blue on these based on the prototypical pictures that I used so here I'm just wrapping around the front of the catwalk uh, getting the the bottom of the low nose and as you can see here uh, just I don't know if I can say this enough or not just take your time uh, I've said it before 90% um, of a good paint job is prep take your time you're going to use a lot of tape might as well figure that up right now but as you can see here uh, we're just working our way around the front we're coming over the top of the low hood to protect that and once we get that area done we're going to start working our ways down the side as you can tell I'm using a couple of different sizes of uh, Tamiya or Tamiya paint uh, not paint but tape and uh, we're, we're making the best use of any of it that we can uh, putting the small pieces into the small areas bigger pieces over bigger areas but basically again just using a little pick and a q-tip and a small flat blade screwdriver just to to nip and tuck and, and push this stuff down into every little nook and cranny notice right there in that picture the um, the sunshades uh, when you're working with details on these locomotives you don't want to force this tape into any area and I have said this before uh, I'll just commentate here a little bit while we're looking at the tape job um, you take your time putting this paint on take your time taking it off don't just rip it off like you would see some of these guys that go in to get their hair removed from their body and they just yank that wax off you don't want to do that here if your paint has not cured to the plastic really well it'll it'll pull up with the tape if you have small details on there uh, the tape can get jammed uh, if you're pulling on the tape and you meet any type of resistance stop pause and uh, look at what what's making it not want to come off all right so here we've wrapped our way around we've gone all the way around the locomotive now this area here is going to prove a little bit hard if you'll notice at the uh, the catwalk when I zoom in here it's higher than the holes where the handrails mount and as you can see in the photo here that I have framed that makes tape in that area really cool nice and smooth no problems when we get to the other side you're going to see a difference now this area is stepped down and there there's there it is right there notice how close to the top edge the holes for the grab irons are uh, I literally had to place this tape just right and and fold it over those and push it into the spot uh, with my fingernails to to get it to uh, adhere tightly uh, and smooth so we didn't get any see now that's exactly right right there see there this on the uh, engineer side they're real close to the top and that's what your tape looks like be careful take a fingernail take a pick or something and just fold that over so it's nice and tight and actually now that I'm looking at the photo I remembered what happened instead of using one piece I decided to use several small little pieces to get them in there level with the catwalk but with enough left over that I could fold it over and keep uh, paint from uh, leaking down in there so now I'm taking a breath <gasps> All right, so now we're working our way down our steps. Uh, no major thing here. It was just sort of kind of wondering how I wanted to do these, so I decided to move on and, and leave them for now. Uh, I, 
it don't, I can't really explain why it was giving me a problem, but I thought, you know, let's just see what happens. I'll leave them, I'll paint them blue, and then I'll come back later and I'll trim them in. So actually in this photo here, I, uh, I did leave. I went ahead and covered up one set and I left one set exposed. Again, I wasn't sure how I wanted to do it, so we paint them, see what happens. So now we're taped up. Uh, this little area right here always gives me a fit. I don't know what that hump is coming out of the side of the locomotive, but when you tape, make sure you go in there and, and you just cover that area up real good so you don't get any leakage. Now, since I was already doing blue, I wasn't really worried about getting any splatter or, or, or blow over on top of the blue, so I didn't waste any tape. Uh, trying to cover up the top of it. So we got the tump, the front wrapped up, we got the back wrapped up, and uh, right here in this next pick, what you're going to see, oh no, in this pick here, you're going to see the tape ball. <laughs> this tape ball just continues to grow. Okay, so that's what we're up to so far. All right, so here we go in this uh, next pick. You are going to see what it looked like after I painted it. Now, again, looking at it from the side, you can't see a whole lot, but that's what it looked like taped up and painted, and voila, look at that handsome rascal. Now, I can see a couple of flaws in it. I'm sure you probably can, too. Right here in this corner, I'm going to use a framer here to let you see. Uh, I put too many layers of tape in there, and I built the surface out, and that's why it didn't quite get up against the side of the low hood. But as I said before, that's correctable. And right here by that old hump, uh, we got a little too much tape in there. So we'll correct that one on the end. Cool part is, is the back side of this step right here, I taped it up to keep it yellow. And uh, remember what I said about flat surfaces being blue, and that turned out nice. The trim around the steps back here turned out really well. A little bit of bleed, not too much. Nothing that can't be corrected. Doesn't that look good? I mean, that looks good. I was really happy with that. Now, uh, I can't remember now if that bleed right there was from a previous uh, episode of painting or this one. I can't remember. But again, it's correctable. Don't worry about these things. Um, here again, this little corner around here, a little too much tape on the front of the battery box or whatever that guy is, but we'll take care of that. Overall, I'm pretty satisfied with it. So after I've played with this thing for a little bit, I decided that uh, I was just going to paint the steps all yellow and come back and detail them. This is the front end of the locomotive. If you remember back to the previous pictures, we painted it all blue. So I just decided to go ahead and retape it up and uh, paint it yellow. Now, uh, you didn't see me taping it up. This is uh, this is afterwards because somebody called me on the phone and I didn't get to take any pictures. But so that's what it looks like now with yellow steps and blue anti climbers and um, pretty sharp with it. So uh, went ahead and started taping up the rest of them to get them done. And here comes a couple pictures after I'd done number two. And here comes a picture for number three. I gotta tell you, I'm pretty satisfied. I'm, I'm, I think they're awesome. I don't care what anybody else says. Uh, I, this was time consuming. It was learning for me. I think they look really good. Uh, so we're, we're pretty much happy with those. A couple more shots here of how they turned out. And um, let me go ahead and tell you this right now. If any of you are interested um, in painting these things, I, I cannot think of a, a better guide for you than this one. Uh, I hope you appreciate the time and the effort I put into it. And if you if you try it or if you want one um, and you don't want to mess with it, send me, a, send me a message here on YouTube. I'll contact you and uh, see if we... Uh, See if we can't uh, work something out. Uh, like I said, these are not for me. They're for somebody else. Um, getting pretty good at doing this stuff. And uh, if I can help you out, I will. All right, so now what we decided to do, since we went ahead and had the blue paint out, we decided to go ahead and take care of the air tanks. Everything below uh, the vermilion stripes on these guys were supposed to be blue except for the hooks at the front. Now the air tanks are, they're two different ways. On the fireman side, or excuse me, on the engineer side, um, the Stantons where the handrails go into are just below the vermilion. So it was real simple to take a piece of tape here, there's those Stantons, uh, to and just put across the top edge of the vermilion stripe and stripe it off so we could paint it blue. I decided to save some tape, use some cardboard, cut a piece to fit, put it in there, taped it in, made it all solid. Hey, it's good to go. But now the other side is kind of weird. 
because remember it has that high step over it and the statins are actually into the air tanks on this particular model so what I decided to do was just to put an outside edge on the side of the vermilion and then lay little pieces of tape over the front of the statins to keep them um, from getting uh, blue because I thought they would look kind of screwy if they were blue and the vermilion handrails going into them were uh, vermilion so I decided to do it this way now we're on the uh, the excuse me we're on the uh, fireman side conductor side now now this one we had to sort of take the tape and turn it up at a, an edge we didn't have to mess with those stands because they were above uh, the air tank so basically I just laid the locomotive on its side took a piece of tape stuck it down into the gap uh, the crack if you will between the air tank and the bottom of the catwalk and then took my pick and just sort of stuck it to the bottom of it now that's a picture looking at it from the side so you can see how it went under that catwalk a little bit and basically what i did then was just fold it up and uh, put a couple pieces of tape on it to hold it in place and uh, we had the area exposed that we want to paint blue and um, the rest of it's vermilion and it's protected so uh what we got here in this next pick all right so yeah that's how it looks with the tape just you remember that high step so we got it taped up we're ready to add some cardboard to it again I just cut a piece of cardboard off a box and uh, stuck it in there took some tape uh, put it in place to secure it got it held down um, added some additional tape that you'll see here in a minute probably should have made these pictures a little shorter so it could go a little faster but that's okay got the front taped off it's ready to go we are just looking at the other side now so again I'm not painting the top so I'm not putting anything between the two pieces of cardboard we're using blue again I'm not worried about it getting on top of the roof because the roof's blue and there you go basically I just held these guys by hand and uh, shot them with the airbrush and when we pulled them off ta-da looks pretty good right I like it looks really really sharp so uh, we're going to zoom in here and we can see that it looks great remember what I said about the vermilion handrails going into the stantons and we wanted them to match the handrails well there you go now on the other side and I'm going to zoom in here you'll see that the statins are up into the catwalk not part of the air tank so what we had to do was we had to tape those off with the little pieces of tape and keep them vermilion all the way around so as you can see they turned out really well uh, happy with uh, with the results of this um, uh, it looks good I'm proud of it I'm, I'm really really proud of it what we're going to do now and again I apologize this video is a little bit long but I didn't want 15 uh, videos on what we're doing here we're going to move on to taping off the low hood to put the vermilion on top of that in the white box here you'll see where I put a piece of tape here and I clipped it so it could be folded down without straining the other uh, the, the rest of the tape I wanted this to be a clear right angle going up the hood and then up the front of the cab for a nice clean line again on this side adding a piece of tape I'm gonna go ahead and clip it right here just like we did the other side fold it down and fold it up and again a nice clean crisp angle uh, you may be able to see that in this next picture here see how straight it comes off the low hood and it comes up by the windshield that's what I was looking for again nice clean and straight it looks good I know that one on the left looks kind of crooked but that's just the angle of the camera now we're going to go ahead and start the uh, the peak of the low hood if you will basically I used one piece of tape here brought it in on the uh, engineer side let me see another angle here basically what I did was I took from where the top of the low hood just started to turn down and that's so if you were if you were holding the model looking sideways all you would see would be the vermilion and the blue on the cab but if you slightly tilted it toward you you would be able to see the blue on top of the low hood pardon me so got these in place I'm gonna go ahead and clip these just like we did the ones by the windshield so we can fold them down nice and straight that worked out good and the next pick here you're gonna see that we basically uh, well actually on this side here I'm just showing you how I folded the other side down these were all laid by hand I'm 47 years old I think they're pretty straight pretty proud of the way it looked just giving you a couple of different angles here so you can see what it looked like once it was folded over if I had not uh, snipped that tape in the um, 
in the places that I did, if you would have folded that tape over, it would have caused a high spot. I don't like high spots. Paint can leak into high spots. Now we've uh, added our piece here. Oh, there's that tape ball. Whoa, that tape ball is huge. Why does that thing keep growing so much? Andrew! Tape. I need more tape, Andrew. I stuck the uh, little locomotive down there so you could get a reference for this thing. It's about the size of a basketball now. Probably bigger than a basketball. Okay, so uh, we're back to what we're doing. Um, got this piece laid in. Got it snipped. I'm going to fold it down. Uh, that's a, uh, a view of the fold there. Pardon me if I seem kind of sluggish. I've eaten dinner now and I'm getting kind of sleepy. Got this piece folded over. Got the other piece ready to lay down. Again, I'm using Q-tips. Nothing fancy. Uh, Q-tips are clean. They're not like your fingers. They don't have any oil. They don't have um, grease, that sort of stuff on your fingers. Q-tips clean. You can rub it backwards and forth. It's not going to mess up the paint. It's not going to transfer anything onto the paint. Uh, the existing paint that the new paint might not stick to. So that's what the nose looked like. Uh, we're coming up on taping up the rest of it here and I'm going to blow through that really fast. Uh, again, I know YouTube, you guys don't have a lot of patience for long videos, but uh, I didn't want this to be a 15 video series. I wanted to get it all squared up. So now we got the, um, the top of the low hood squared off. We're going to take a piece here and you really can't see it but there's a little lip there at the back of the low hood where it tied into the windshield and I decided to leave that up. Uh, run another piece over, put another piece of tape in the corner there to cover that little spot and snip that as well. Um, that's basically how you want your locomotive to look uh, to keep this area squared off. Nice angles. Went ahead and laid a piece over that to hold it down. Now I'm going to tell you something. You just look at the tape here and let me talk for a minute. When you're putting this tape on and you're trying to, to create a straight line, we'll call this the tip of the day, don't force your tape. Don't put another piece of tape over another piece of tape and then clamp it down real tight. Because what I found from doing this is if you, if you go in there, like this piece right here on the left side of the low hood, if I had put that piece of tape in there and then pushed it into the corner, uh, what I found was that the tape under that piece of tape wanted to pull out of where I had put it and it wanted to make the line squiggly. So when you're doing this stuff, again, don't force it. Don't don't use it like you're using duct tape to, to patch your shoe or a hole in the fender or whatever you're doing with duct tape. This stuff ain't like duct tape. It will give. It will move. It's not the stickiest, most tackiest pain in the world. That's why you can use it on paint without it messing up the surface, without it pulling the paint off. It's not duct tape. Just go smooth. So as you can see here in this photo, we're wrapping up the front now. We're laying this piece on. We're pushing them in. We're laying them down. We're not forcing anything. I'm, I'm coming up on a picture here in a minute where I'm going to give you a good demonstration of what I'm talking about. Wrapping around the front of the hood here, as you can see right here in these pictures, we got a couple of gaps. I am not going to take my thumb and push into that gap there on the left on the engineer side to try to cover that hole. I'll come back and put another piece of tape over it because I guarantee you as your, as your wrist is attached to your forearm and your forearm is attached to your elbow and your elbow is attached to your upper arm, you start pushing and pulling on one, it will affect the other end. Classic example right here. You see that little crack outline there? Had I started pushing in on that, all three of those layers of tape up to the top of that low hood would have started to pull down. And that would have caused a crooked line and a crooked line. I don't want a crooked line. Nobody likes a crooked line. That's a little humor there for you. All right, so we're buzzing through this thing really fast now. I, again, I'm not going to go through all the details of wrapping this tape up. You've watched me tape enough stuff up. You've got the hang of it. Again, this little corner, be really careful right here. Make sure that you get stuff pushed in tight and then build off of it. As you can see, I've got this one where I need it to be at. I don't want no leakage in there. And right here, you can see where I just taped over it and taped over it and taped over it until I got it completely covered. Again, we're not taping back here uh, for a line. We're just taping to cover. So however it'll go on and it'll cover your holes, be fine with it. Sorry about this little squeaky chair. So we got the fireman side covered up. Uh, we're going to jump over to the... Uh, 
engineer side now and we're going to basically do the same thing we're going to work our way from the nose back whenever you're doing these projects pick an end start at the end work forward start at uh, the front and work your way back start at the top work your way down as I mentioned in the previous video if you're putting a piece of tape on for a line that's where you start as you as you can see think back to the, the pictures here I started I framed off the top of the low hood and I worked down now I got that squared away now I'm starting at the front and I'm working my way to the rear pardon me and now we got the fire on the uh, engineer side done everything's good to go uh, we're painting the blue so we don't want any blue on any yellow so we're going to add a few pieces of tape here to the steps on the front I'm trying to think I don't think I taped up the steps on the rear because I wasn't uh, I wasn't spraying back there anywhere but uh, we're getting these guys wrapped up again tape affects tape upper arm elbow uh, lower arm forearm uh, wrist you know just take your time with this stuff uh, again um, I bet you it probably took me an hour and a half um, maybe two hours to tape this up the majority of it was spent trying to get those lines on top of the low hood straight uh, putting on taking off putting on taking off getting it right so it looks like we're good here it looks like we're ready to paint we got everything covered up and uh, yeah we went ahead and shot paint on this one uh, I think I used uh, three coats on it I think I hit it three different times uh, allowing it to uh, to dry well through each time and um, so what are we doing here we're looking at a different angle yeah yeah looking here spraying it all over now you can see where that paint settled right there so now you can see why I spent so much attention to that area and making sure now this is cool take a look at this this is what it looks like when you start to untape it as you can see I'm zooming in here you can see that nice clear line when you have your tape pressed down the way you want it that's the way it's going to look when you peel that tape off slowly and then we taking it off down the side there you ready hold your breath YouTube here it comes two one and boom there you go what do you think about that ha! don't that look good I was really happy with the way that looked so um, what we're going to do now is um, we're going to take a look at some pictures we're going to see the tape ball grow and I'm going to go ahead and tell you what we're getting ready into uh, I'm going to go ahead and shoot the other two of these and get them done and when I come back we're going to start with the corrections we're going to come back and show you how to uh, tape off and make any corrections where you may have bled or had some runnage at and then what we're going to do is we're going to add a few details to this thing and we're going to send it off to get the decoder put in it so um, again I thank you for watching this if you're interested in me doing one of these for you contact me through YouTube otherwise you know thanks for watching uh, rate comment share y'all take care see you YouTube bye <laughs>